Hi there, Andrew Dixon, AJ Design Studio. We have a video today looking at modelling an arch top or a carved top guitar body. So for the subject matter of Victor Les Paul, uh, solid body, and I've selected more of an older Les Paul form where there was more curvaceousness to the carve on the top uh, than some of the more contemporary ones. So this is the subject matter of an earlier video where I was doing some sketch planning, like sketching over photos to decide how to model something, and the Les Paul body was one of the things I was looking at there, so I decided to model this, have a go. This took several attempts and various things to try and get a nice result, so I'm not obviously going to model this uh, live because it would be quite a long video, so instead I'm just going to do what I normally do and roll back through the tree and just explain various things that I've done. So I'm, I'm not modelling the whole guitar because that's not the point of this exercise, just to look at modelling a sort of form like this which you do see pop up online on forums now and then, people saying how do I model a, viol a violin top or, a, or an arch top guitar. So this is the result and if I turn on my edges you can sort of see um, what I might have done. So I'm just going to roll back through and explain what I've done to create this. Okay, so I've imported, uh, I've got this surface here, which is created from a series of ISO lines. I found this online, so that's a rough reference for a uh, Les Paul top. Um, I haven't modeled line to line on this because I also found some side elevational data and uh, the side elevation and the you can see there's the side elevation here and then, then the ISO lines are out here so they they don't match up so I've just decided to sort of um, follow the ISO lines for the general form shape and then a few other constraints like the neck angle at 4.5 degrees so I followed that. So first thing I did was create the outer profile. I decided that I'm going to just consider this as symmetric model one half mirror it over and I'm going to build the surfaces full width rather than modeling to the center line because I don't want to have to have any issues with continuity across the center line. For the profile I've used instead of a Bezier curve I've used a style spline but a degree five um, which means I've got 10 CVs there which means because it's a multi-span curve when I move this end around here because it's a multi-span curve, I was having problems doing this as a single span curve because if you move this end here, it affects the other end. So I went for multi-span instead. So trace that off and then created a center section, which is based on a bit of a hybrid of the uh, these imported ISO lines and the other side elevation. So I used the side elevation to control the front and my ISO lines for the rear end. And I have specified a high point. So this is an actual explicit high point because this point here on the spline is tangent to horizontal. Um, and then that is, as you can see there, that's 12.7 millimeters above the body thickness. So the edge of the binding there's 49 millimeters and then we extend the top cap up 12.7. Okay, and that's a, style spline on the top there that goes into a line here curvature continuous into the line because the line here we need it to be linear in this area because you've got the neck of the guitar going on and you don't really want um, a deviating from the binding so there you can see the neck okay next thing up extruded that main body then mirrored it over, so that's a solid, then deleted the top face, like that, and created a sketch which has some construction lines in it which I'm going to use to create sections. So they control the planes, and you can see here I've got one, two, three, four sections. So these sections are going to build, I'm going to build one boundary surface from this section through to this section. And the sections are 
uh, styles blinds and they are set up so they're symmetric. Let's go into one of them and show you. So in this case, this is a degree five styles blind, so it's got six CVs and each of the CVs are set up um, so they're symmetric. So if I change something over here, it will change it on the side as well. Okay. And for some of the sections down the rear end of the guitar, I've actually gone to a, a degree seven style spline. So I've got two extra CVs in there. And that's to create this kind of more accentuated um, concavity that runs around the outside of the body from probably, probably about halfway up. Sort of disappears by the time it hits to the, um, the upper bout. Yeah. So around the lower bout, the pink cavity. Okay, next thing I've done is I have created, I don't know if anybody's used connectors before in boundary surfaces, so I'll just go into the boundary surface and show you what the connectors do. So if we turn off our zebra stripes, turn on mesh preview, uh, and then you turn mesh, mesh density up. You can see here the mesh that is the UV flow of the surface. And to control the UV flow of the surface, you can add things called connectors. So if I go into the second direction here and I right click and go add connector, I can add, and it adds three points along here because I've got three sections. And then you can drag those around. And as you can see, they change the UV flow of the surface and quite drastic, drastically change the form. So I wanted to have control over the UV flow in the longitudinal direction. Uh, and because this was symmetric, I can't just right click and go add, um, because then I'd have to move both sides individually and there's no way to dimensionally move these. But what you can do is you can clip, clip the um, connectors onto uh, external geometry. So what I did first was I created this UV flow sketch so if I roll back to that sketch, I'll just explain what I've done. I've created a 3D sketch and those lines, each vertice at the end of the line is coincident to one of the four sections that control the surface. And then I have a dimension from the center line out. Okay. Then I have extruded those. So that's the surface extrude from a 3D sketch. So if you do that, you have to specify a direction. So I'll specify the top plane. Okay. And then, which gives me the surface here. And then I've mirrored that across. And then inside the boundary surface, when I add connectors, I can, um, I'll just delete the connectors and I'll just show you on one, one row. So if I go reset, okay, and make our preview transparent. Okay, if you go right click here, go add connector. So you can see it's added these pink dots in. If you grab one of these dots and move it, if it turns black, that means it's clipped onto your geometry. Sometimes you have to change your angle to get it to clip on like that okay so now that's clipped onto my extrude which is controlled by my 3d sketch okay that one went black so that means i can set up the four rows uh, and i know they'll be symmetric because they are referencing a mirrored extrude i'm just going to exit this so i don't have to redo it okay Inside my resulting surface, I have control over the UV flow without adding extra sections in, like in the longitudinal direction. Next thing I've done is I've added a, a 3D sketch with face curves in it. So the face curves are there to allow me to uh, tweak the surface without having to go inside the boundary surface. So I can go to add uh, face curves, just go insert 3D sketch, Pick a surface, tools, oops, tools, sketch tools, face curves, and then you can pick in your U and V direction how many curves you want. So in this case, I want them in longitudinal direction like that. Okay. 
So what that allows me to do is if I go into a plan view, I can then go up here to my UV control and double click that and maybe I change a dimension here. I'll just change something drastically to make it obvious what's going on. And you'll be able to see the face curves change. So if I change this here from 60 to 75, say, so, and then hit rebuild, you watch the, the, the flow of the uh, face curves. Okay, see what happened there? So they've gone much wider there. So that's a really great way to be able to control the flow of the surface without actually having to add extra sections to your boundary surface, which can cause other problems. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on. Next thing was to create this lower trim. So I've got to trim the surface back to create this lower surface like that. So what I've done is, if you watched any of my other videos, when I have to uh, create a four-sided surface, basically I just trim back with three boundaries and that leaves us with a four-sided hole. And then I've added a boundary surface in there for the upper bouts like that except with the upper bouts I had to add another section in so to do that the section here is a style spline that is curved to continuous to an intersection curve uh, and because this is a symmetric surface instead of modeling it in half and mirroring it across I don't want to have any problems with the center line so I extruded that sketch here mirrored it across and then in the boundary surface, I referenced both of those edges of those extrudes. So I know this will be symmetric. Okay, and that surface is tangent to uh, the faces on these three boundaries. And I have got 100% tangent influence in both directions. Just seem to work best. Okay, and then that's knitted together. Okay, next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to check uh, the flow of the surface. So what I've done is I've created an extruded surface at the height of the outside of the top carved surface and then made a pattern. It's a pattern that, uh, let's see, how many times? Okay, 13 one millimeter apart that surface and then I've created a 3D sketch and intersected those planar surfaces with my surface at the top here which gives me, I'll just hide some other stuff which gives me these curves here so I can evaluate um, sort of the flow here so these are like topographical lines I guess because they've got equal uh, vertical distance between them um, I could com compare them to the uh, imported ISO lines, there's quite a bit of difference, but some of the ISO line gaps looked quite uh, inconsistent, so I don't know if that's necessarily the um, a smooth input, you know. So that was quite useful to do, uh, and you can see here, because the spacing is very even, that's because this is pretty much linear in this area, there's no curvature because that's where our neck is connecting. Okay. And you can see around the edge here, it gets quite flat. That's because that's the concave hollow. And then it gets steeper as it rises up here into the top of the body. Okay. Yeah, so that's just a check. That's just something I wanted to uh, confirm. Next thing up is to solidify the body. And then create an extrude and surface cut. Get rid of the, uh, the cutout. So my reasoning behind building this as an overbuilt surface is trying to build patches up to this edge here it's never going to work you're far better off building an overbuilt surface and then cutting it out because that's pretty much what happens in reality i cut off the top out and then this is a removed section okay and then i have added the fillet on the end here which is a hold line fillet using a split line with two dimensions to control that and next up is to create the binding I've offset the outwards the outside surface inwards so that's the binding thickness and then binding depth I just offset 
the top surface here. Extended those out so they extended out past the main um, exterior of the body, trimmed them like so, so that's a mutual trim, and then split the main solid body, create the binding, which is this feature here. So it's created the binding, and then I've repeated a similar thing to to split off the mahogany uh, main body from the maple top cap, and you can see I've got this little sort of a uh, sliver of maple top cap, which you can see, which which you also see on all these pool. Okay, and then just added some fillets and cleaned it up with a body keep delete to get rid of my surface models, surface helper surfaces and stuff. Okay, so we haven't turned zebras on, so let's have a look. It's so fairly smooth, obviously quite a lot of curvature to change around here. Um, and we've got the constraint of this area here wanting to be fairly flat. So quite a bit going on really. Um, but equally quite tweakable depending on what you want to do. So you could change this if you wanted to build some other kind of guitar like a 335 or what have you. That's a good starting point anyway. So that's kind of overbuilding over the cutaway um, using boundary surfaces. And um, and then setting up things like these controls um, with my um, intersecting pattern through the top here to get my section checked, just to check, you know, because it's quite hard to evaluate what's going on with the surface. So there are things you can do, like the section check there and also the face curve check here to check the UV flow of the surface, the main surface. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. I'll put the file in the description so you can um, pick it apart. It's a SOLIDWORKS 2020 file. Um, yeah, happy modeling. Thanks for watching. Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. See ya.